Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video, we'll be talking about the correlation coefficient. When we're doing correlation coefficients, they usually correspond with two variables, two things that we're trying to correlate to each other. In this case, we'll be trying to correlate the age of a child to the weight of a child in kilograms. The age of the child will be considered in years, while the, the weight will be in kilograms, as I just repeated. And here we're going to take a look at our samples. Here we have a table where the age is determined by the variable of x and the weight is determined by the variable y. Now, here we see that we have a set of collected samples in pairs. So a kid of the age of 5 weighs 8 kilograms for the first sample. In our second sample, we have a child weighing 6, six, I mean six years of age weighing 8 kilograms. Our third sample here shows a, a child of 8 years of age weighing 12 kilograms, while our fourth child here is an age of 5 with a weight of 9 kilograms. And our final sample here shows a, a child of the age of 6 with a weight of 11 kilograms. Now here the first thing we want to identify is the number of samples, which we'll call n. Now n, in this case, is going to be 5 for our 5 sample pairs, right? Now once we have that determined, we're going to try to finish the chart here that we see before us. To complete the correlation coefficient, we're going to need a couple of other pieces of data. The first piece of data we're going to need is the product of x and y. So we'll just go ahead and label this table chart. And the next chart value of the column is going to be x squared. Our last and final column is going to be the value of y squared. Now what we want to do is we want to perform the operations that the column header has and we're going to fill up the chart all the way and then we're going to take the sum of every column. And with those sums we're going to use this correlation coefficient formula to calculate the correlation coefficient. Alright, so let's begin then. Our first sample, we have 5 and 8, so we're going to do the product of 5 and 8, that gives us 40. The second sample has 6 and 8, so 6 times 8 is 48. Our third sample, 8 by 12, which is 96. Our fourth sample is 5 times 9, which is 45. And our fifth sample is 6 by 11, which is 66. That takes care of the x and y column. Now the next column we want to do is the x squared column. So we're going to take all our values of x and we're going to square them. So the first sample is 5 squared. 5 squared, 25. 6 squared would be 36. 8 squared will be 64. 5 squared, again, 25. And 6 squared, again, this is 36. Our final column, the y squared value. So we're going to take the values of weights and we're going to square the weights. So our first weight is 8 squared, which is 64. Our second weight is 8 again, which is again 64. Our third weight is 12 kilograms, which becomes 144 kilograms when we square it. Our fourth is 9, 9 squared gives us 81. And our final one is 11 squared, which is 121. Now, our next task is to take the sums of these columns so we can get the summation of each term that we have up here, which is indicated in the formula. We have the sum of x, y, the sum of x, the sum of y, the sum of x squared, and the sum of y squared to worry about. So let's calculate these. We have 5 plus 6 plus 8 plus 5 plus 6. This gives us 30. Our second set here. We have 8 plus 8 plus 12 plus 9 plus 11. This gives us 48. Our third column is 40 plus 48 plus 96 plus 45 plus 66. This is 295. Our fourth column here, we have 25 plus 36 plus 64 plus 25 plus 36. This is 186. And our final column here gives us 64 plus 64 plus 144 plus 81 plus 121. This is 474. So now let's label each one of these as a variable that we see in this formula that we're using. Our first column here is going to be the sum of x. So the sum of x here is going to equal 30 while the sum of y we see is 48. Our sum of x times y is 295. Our sum of x squared is 186. Our, here, let, let's fix this notation so that we don't get confused when using the formula. We'll put the x squared in parentheses here. And then we have the sum of y squared, 
which is equivalent to 474. Now we'll be using these, four, these five variables plus our number of samples in this equation. Now the only thing we want to be careful about when we're doing this equation is these denominator terms right here. We have the sum of x being squared, not to be confused with the sum of x squared. The sum of x squared is this. The sum of x being squared will be this 30 being squared, but we'll talk about it when we get there. So let's start our substitutions, right? And we have here the correlation coefficient r is equivalent to the number of samples n, which is 5, times the sum of x times y, which we see the sum of x times y is 295. Take away the sum of the x term, the sum of the x is 30, as we can see right over here, and the sum of y is also 48. This covers the numerator. Let's just put a line of division over this. And now we're going to do these two components separately for the denominator. We have one square root where inside we have the number of samples times the sum of x squared minus the value of the sum of x being squared. So we have here our value is 5 times the sum of x squared is 186 minus the sum of x being squared. Now this value again, remember, be very careful because we're squaring the value that we have the sum of x and the sum of x is 30, not 186. Remember, the sum of x is being squared, not the sum of x squared. For the second half, we're going to do the same thing. In this case, it's going to be in the terms of y, not x. It's very similar to the x, but instead we'll be using the y terms. So we have here the number of samples, which is 5, times the, num the sum of y being squared, which is 474, minus the sum of y being squared. And in this case, the sum of y being squared will be the sum of this term. So that would be 48 squared. Now be careful not to confuse the y squared, the y being squared, with the y squared again. So now let's start calculating what we have in this equation. We'll start by evaluating everything with the order of operations, the same as we do with all math. In this case, we could just evaluate the numerator multiplications and the denominator multiplications inside the radical. So we'll start with up top right here, and we're going to get 5 times 295. That's going to give us 1,475. And we're going to subtract the product of 30 and 48. The product of 30 and 48 is 1,440. In our denominators, we've got lots of work to do. We have the exponents, we have these products. In this case, we can do both at the same time because this is also a product after we're expanding. So we have 5 by 186 in a radical. 5 by 186, that's going to give us 930. And then we have 30 squared. 30 squared is 900. And we're multiplying this result times the square root of what we have going on here. The 5 times 474, this is going to be 2,370. And we're subtracting 48 squared. In this case, 48 squared is going to be 2,304. Now our last two steps to do, or rather three, is to take the difference of the numerator, the difference of this square root, and the difference of this square root, inside the square roots rather, not the square roots themselves. So we're going to take the, the value of 930 minus 900, 2370 minus 2304, and also 1475 minus 1440. So here we go. Let's work this out right over here. 1475 minus 1440, that's going to give us 35 on top. And down here we have the square root of 930 minus 900. This is just 30. And we're multiplying this times the square root of 2370 minus 2304. This is just 66. Now our next step for this correlation is going to be to take the products of the inside of the radical so we can have one radical. Anytime you have two radicals with numbers in them, you want to multiply the insides of the radical and keep them inside of the radical. So here we're going to have 35 on top, and on the bottom we're going to get the product of 30 and 66. The product of 30 and 66, that's about 1980. To be exact, it's actually precisely 19. 180. And now what we want to do next is take the square root of 1980. And we want to do this and evaluate it with a good amount of decimals. So a good amount of decimals will be three places if we take the square root of this. So the
The square root of 1980 is going to be exactly 44.497. Now with this, we can finish the problem and just divide 35 by 44.497. Now when we do this division, we want to get our solution with not too many decimals, but a, a quantity enough to round our decimal to three positions. So we're going to divide this, and when we divide 35 by 44.497, we're going to get 0 Five, six, and this decimal continues, but the numbers after this are insignificant. So now that we have this value, we're going to round this solution to this position. So r is going to equal 0 0.78, and because the 5 is 5 or greater, we're going to round the 6 to a 7. So there we have our correlation coefficient, which is 0 0.787. Thank you for watching our video and please make sure you subscribe to our channel for more videos, alright?